Welcome everyone to the Health, Happiness and Planet podcast, where we explore different ways to boost our well-being, live a more fulfilling life and protect our planet. This podcast is sponsored by Wave Business Excellence Footprint, the online training company that cares about your development and the well-being of this planet. You can find the courses for employees and managers under www.wave-bef.com. In today's episode, we're going to speak with someone who spent the last 20 years researching and validating the effects of electrically grounding the human body to the earth to reduce and prevent inflammation and related autoimmune disorders. This guest has rediscovered the most important health discovery ever. Something very simple and very natural and at the same time very effective. In year 2014, there was the book called Earthing, the most important health discovery ever. Then, in 2019, he starred in the documentary that came out in Netflix called The Earthing Movie, which became very popular. Today, you can also find it in YouTube. I am thrilled to introduce you to my amazing guest, Clint Ober, who lives in Palm Springs, California, USA. Over two decades, Clint's work has triggered over 20 research studies that have been published on the extensive health benefits of grounding, which have shown impressive improvements in reducing inflammation in your body, improving your sleep, reduce and eliminate pain and stiffness in your body, optimize circulation, improve blood pressure, regulate cortisol, calm your stress receptors, reduce depression, anxiety and tiredness. It also increases your energy, your mood, or so-called your happiness level. It improves your blood glucose, your blood viscosity, boosts your immunity, helps thyroid function, improves your metabolism, increases the speed of wound healing, recovers vagal tone, serum electrolytes, increases your athletic performance and recovery, and much, much more. All of this just sounds too good to be true. How much would a pharma company pay to get one pill to solve so many issues so effectively without any side effects? How much would a person pay for such a pill to obtain so many health benefits without having those downsides? Well, the good news, it already exists and it always existed and it is for free and we all have easy access to it. It is the power of touching the earth. Think about it. When was the last time you touched the earth? Grounding has now become a massive international movement causing people to shed their shoes and reconnect electrically to the surface of the earth. This will not only make us healthier and happier, but it is also sustainable for our planet. I'm thrilled to introduce you to this amazing guest, Clint. Hello, Clint, and welcome Hello. to the Health, Happiness, and Planet podcast. It's so great to have you here. Thanks, Juan. I'm really uh, glad to be here. I've looked forward to this. I have a lot of friends in Spain, and uh, so this is a great opportunity. Yes, fantastic. Thank you. And thanks for taking the time. And I have first questions, which is a very basic question, just in case some of the listeners have not yet heard about grounding or earthing. And the question is, could you please tell us what grounding and earthing actually means? Okay, well, grounding and earthing are two different words. They have really two different meanings, yeah. but they're kind of used interchangeably. But the word earthing means it's an electrical term, meaning that you drive a rod into the earth, or what they call a ground rod. Uh, then you can connect wire to it, and then it allows electrons to flow from the earth up the wire into the home, and then anything that has a metal chassis, if you plug it into a ground, then it's what we call grounded. Uh, so the grounding means to take two objects and to connect a wire between them so you can equalize the potential to eliminate static electricity, static charges. That doesn't help totally explain grounding. I guess the easiest way to say it is the earth is uh, kind of like a battery, like a capacitor, and it's charged by the sun. You know, photons and electrons come streaming down and they excite the electrons on the earth and create energy. And there's an excess, an abundance, let's say, of free electrons on the surface of the earth. And they've been there from the beginning of time. You know, the electrical surface charge of the earth was there before we came along. 
and before any life came along, actually. And when you touch the earth, your body is a conductor, so it will absorb these electrons or this surface charge and your body will equalize with the earth. So it's kind of grounded, so it reduces the potential for an electrical event for charge or anything like that. Now, throughout most of time, there was never a need to worry about that because we were barefoot, we slept on the earth, we lived on the earth, uh, we had our fingers in the dirt, growing food, gathering food, whatever. So we were always naturally grounded. It's like oxygen. You did not need to know that oxygen existed. It was built in, automatic. <laughs> You just breathe. But anyhow, grounding is to maintain your body at earth potential, meaning that you have the same amount of electrons or negative charge. Negative meaning no charge, but the excess negative charge that the earth has, the only thing it does is it moves quickly and to reduce charge. The easiest way to think of it is lightning. The most natural electrical event in our environment is lightning. You know, in the, in the morning, the sun comes up and we have evaporation. Molecules rise up into the air. And then around between noon and 2 o'clock, as the Earth turns towards evening, then the atmosphere cools. And then you have condensation where the molecules come together and form clouds. Top of the clouds are negative, meaning like the Earth, because they all come from the Earth anyway. But on the bottom, we have what we call positive charge. And that's an electrical phenomena. Like repels like, like little magnets. If there's two negative, two negative, they push each other apart. Well, the top of the clouds become negative and the bottom becomes positive, And then the earth is negative. So there's a, a lot of activity there. I don't want to go into explaining all of it. But so anyhow, once the positive charge in the clouds gets high enough, then it'll cause a welling of free electrons on the surface of the earth. And as soon as there's an, an equal amount of positive charge, then there's a crack in the fissure or in the uh, plasma. And then the electrons can travel back and forth and reduce the charge in the clouds and balance the electrical circuit of the earth. Yeah. But it's in, in nature. That's the most common thing we see. A few thousand years ago, they discovered that you could rub, you know, something wool on uh, resin or things like that and it would sparkle and that was the first time that humans ever really noticed something the electrical phenomena and that was just static electricity but anyhow so throughout most time and most of life on the planet there was never an issue with this but what makes grounding important today or for people to become aware of why it's important is in about 1960 the majority of the population around the world was still barefoot and the majority of the people slept within a couple inches of the earth at night. <laughs> yeah. But in the modern cities in the U.S. and, and Europe and, and a few other areas, we had technology and we could build wood homes, put floors in them, and then we put beds in them. So we were sleeping in beds. We weren't sleeping on the earth. We weren't touching the earth. We were not walking the earth. In 1960, the thing that really exacerbated this was when we invented the synthetic materials, the synthetic plastics. We had rubber for many years before, but rubber was expensive and it was primarily used for work shoes or where they had to have protection on their feet. And shoes were all made of leather, which was expensive. <laughs> And you had to take care of them. It's like if you were walking down the street and it started raining, you had to take your shoes off and carry them <laughs> and protect them because if they got wet, it would ruin them. But in 1960, when they began making the synthetic polymers, then the first thing they did was put synthetic soles on the shoes. And this was a great thing because now everybody could afford shoes. You didn't have to worry about them getting wet, anything. You could just <laughs> go forever. So there was a, a rise from 19, late 1960s to current, you know, like this, of autoimmune-related health disorders or inflammation-related health disorders. But the work that I've spent the last 25 years is reconnecting people to the earth physically, putting bare feet on the earth or grounding them to the earth so that they equalize with the earth, so they have the same amount of negative charge as the earth itself. Along the way, we learned that that reduced pain almost instantly. Somebody has pain in their body, you put their feet on the earth, keep them there long enough, the pain will go away sometimes in as little as five, 10 minutes. And um, other people, depending on how much damage, it takes a little longer. But anyhow, so 
from the late 90s till about 2004, we were forever trying to understand why grounding the human body reduced pain. Nobody knew. There was nothing in the literature. A lot of, you know, old stories and wives' tales. And a lot of uh, native or indigenous cultures, people that were sick, dig a little pit and bury them in the earth. And nobody could understand why, but, you know, they would recover after that. So, but that was all that was in the literature, and it took us many years to even uncover that. But eventually we learned that the immune system of the human body operates with what we call reactive oxygen species. The word reactive means that the radicals that the immune system releases are powerful enough that they can rip an electron away from the structure of a pathogen, and that's how the immune system destroys pathogens. That's kind of like ionizing radiation. I mean, it's very, very powerful. The problem was is when we were living on the earth and naturally grounded, our bodies always carried a negative charge. You know, we always had an abundance of free electrons in our body. And if there was an, an electrical event, then the earth's free electrons could immediately go and reduce that charge. And in this case, the immune system would do its normal process pathogen comes swimming by, a neutrophil will swim over to it, encapsulate it, wrap itself around it, and then it'll start releasing this reactive oxygen, and then it'll destroy the pathogen. But when that process is done, if there are any remaining radicals within three or four nanoseconds, they will steal an electron from a healthy tissue, damage it, and then the immune system will send another neutrophil And then you set up this chain reaction, and that's what's called chronic immune disorder, immune dysfunction, because the immune system is not shutting down. In nature, when you have your bare feet on the earth, the body has plenty of free electrons. But when you start wearing shoes, then you deplete the body of electrons. You don't have enough. And then these radicals, there's not enough electrons there to reduce them at the site. So they start creating what we call inflammation, body on fire, body in flame. So anyhow, grounding and health, this is how this kind of all comes together. It's a story that takes a long time to tell. And I've been working on it for 25 years. And uh, we've grounded millions and millions of people around the world, probably 98% women, because it's moms taking care of moms. Uh, Moms taking care of their older mom and older moms taking care of their younger moms and their daughters and so on. Uh, The women love it because... It's inexpensive. They don't need to know the science. They just need to know that it works. A woman buys it, tries it, or she goes outdoors and starts spending time outdoors, either one. Then the first thing she does is get her mother grounded, and then after that, her sister and whatever. So it's kind of a ground swell around the world, yeah. and it's really her mom's taking care of moms yeah. and helping them. So it's as old as time, but we didn't know we needed ground until we disconnected and that was only 60 years ago amazing (laughs) so 64 63 years ago so it's a modern phenomena i've been working on it for 25 years so this is all modern stuff exactly and and when we think what are the things that we do different today and that's precisely as you said you know when in around 1960 when that type of shoe started coming out that was the point of time where most of civilization got disconnected from the earth yes Yeah, that's when autoimmune diseases yeah. like diabetes, lupus, MS, autism, anything that you can type on Google and type in the word inflammation and type in your disease yeah. and up comes a hundred research studies, there's a connection. Yeah. <laughs> Cardiovascular disease, cancer, all of these things are related. The explosion of these modern health disorders. Especially if you think about the word itself, inflammation, that's probably was not used so long ago because many doctors no. did not even know what that was. And today, I think more and no. more people hear about it and they know, ah, inflammation, I know it's not good and I know it could cause many other things in my body that it's not good for me. So I think the general knowledge is moving that direction now. Yeah. Yeah. It was only since 204, 20 years ago, that uh, Ritger and the boys at uh, Boston Mass did a lot of research and they produced a a series of papers and an article was published in Time magazine, front page, and it showed a picture of the body and flames coming up and the word inflammation. That was the first time people really had been exposed to the term. And they said very simply, you do not have cancer, you do not have, you know, MS, lupus, all these things. What you have is chronic inflammation. And the chronic, it's a slow smoldering fire. 
It's like the average cancer takes 20 years to develop and so on. And, and, but anyhow, so your body has this fire going on. And what it does, first of all, it compromises the immune system because the immune system now is trying to put out a fire that it itself is creating. So it doesn't have all the resources it needs to reduce and maintain normal health. Because every time you breathe, you're breathing in pathogens. Every time you eat food, there's, you know, metabolic process creates a lot of radicals. This is a normal, you know, war that's going on in the body all the time. But then all of a sudden, if the inflammation comes along, then it kind of captures the immune system and prevents it from taking care of the normal things that it would normally be doing. Especially if I think about the human body, every single cell in our body, every single organ that we have, our skin, everything is made out of little cells. And if these cells, when yes. they die away and they replicate themselves to create new cells, then you could say after a couple of years, you have again a brand new body. But the only problem is if you have inflammation, these old cells, when they replicate to the new cell, the new cell cannot be replicated in such good health as it was before. Yeah, and that's, I think, one, right. of the, one of the causes of many illnesses. Yeah. Today, we have a million people trying to sell people a million solutions for health. <laughs> I grew up in Montana and on a ranch, and we ran cattle as I was a child. And this is back in the 40s and 50s, you know. The whole mission of if you have a ranch or, or if you're running animals, you have to feed them, keep them healthy. If they get sick, then you have to call the vet and the bank at the same time and you just kind of turn everything over to them because you can't make a living. So, but as a young boy, I just sat on a horse off times, just riding a pasture, looking at the cows. My brothers are with me sometimes and just making sure they were healthy. And if one of them got sick, we'd take them out of the herd, put them in a holding pen, and then ride the pasture, check the water, check the creek upstream, make sure there's, it's clean, uh, make sure the grass is not too short, make sure there's no noxious weeds in the pasture. Because if the cattle are starting to get sick, then something in the pasture is causing that. So you have to move them out of that section, put them in a different whatever, and let the pasture restore, or whatever it is. But there's always something if you have health disorder in the animals, then you, you're doing something to their environment that needs to be changed and cleaned up so that you can take care of the cattle and make a living. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Now that we are also more into the topic of, of animals, I was reading some chapter in the book that there was even a study about pets. You have dogs or cats and you're living in a sky rise building somewhere on the 10th floor. They don't have that much connection anymore to the ground and that there is a study that they are also having more problems with their health than dogs who are actually living in houses that are more grounded. They have their own garden. Could you tell us a little bit more about that? Just basically in nature, this is changing as we speak. Inflammation doesn't exist in nature because these animals are grounded. So these animals do not develop cardiovascular disease, lupus, MS, autism, cancer, and the like. That mean the animals that live in the wild. This inflammation thing is an environmental thing. We lost our ground. We no longer touch the earth. So now we're kind of like astronauts in free space and uh, we don't have any redox potential or any ground to mop up the radicals that are created. There was a few years ago, you're supposed to go out and eat a pint of blueberries every day. That was going to fix your inflammation. Well, you'd have to have a blueberry drip <laughs> in order to do that. But the animals who live indoors with their owners, 50% of them die from cancer, just like their owners. Wow. Ask any vet, dogs, cats, domestic animals. Yeah. Where outdoors, and outdoor animals, coyote, wolf, the dogs that live outdoors, and the deer, the larger animals, cancer doesn't exist. Cancer doesn't manifest. So it, it does today because we are disrupting. I mean, like dogs today, they live indoors mostly. It might be a little different in parts of Spain. But in the U.S., most animals live indoors. They go for a walk on a sidewalk, <laughs> and that's all good. But... Your immune system works 24-7. It doesn't stop. Every time you breathe in air, you're breathing in pathogens. You have a simple cytokine storm that takes place in the lungs that you know, reduces all those radicals. And as long as you're grounded, then any of the excess reactive oxygen species that are left over after the oxidative burst, it's not a problem because they're instantly reduced. They don't damage the adjacent cells. If you're ungrounded and you have an asthma attack, it'll go on and it can kill you. 
because the immune system doesn't shut down because the immune response now is creating damage. And then the immune system goes to work releasing more radicals in order to reduce the damage cells and, the, and so on. And, and so it's just a chain reaction. But you can take somebody who has an asthma attack, put them outdoors, take their shoes off, put their feet in the grass, stops instantly because the body becomes flooded with free electron. But yeah, animals today, the animal health industry is as big as medical industry. Uh, take a dog to a vet and see what the bill is, <laughs> you'll find out. It's crazy. Exactly. And, and then suddenly came all the insurance companies saying, oh, we can insure your pet so that you don't have to worry about all those increasing health costs. Right. Yeah, so it's a big, big business. Yeah. You know, this happened accidentally. Nobody got up one day and this wasn't done intentionally. <laughs> yeah. This is modern man. You know, for the last few hundred years, all we've done is invent, invent, invent. Now we invent more every 30 days than we did in the last 300 years. And all of this technology is great, but there's a double-edged sword. I mean, you, you are nature. You are a part of the earth. You come from the earth. You live on the earth. The earth is what keeps you alive, keeps you energized. And when it's through, you go back to the earth. So we are the earth up walking around. <laughs> and you need to maintain that normal, whether it's a, an electrical umbilical cord or whatever it is. But you need to maintain this energetic connection with the earth because it not only reduces the radicals from an oxidative burst and prevents inflammation, but it also, the cycles and rhythms of the seasons and of the day, all of these are cueing devices for a lot of the hormone cascades, just a lot of things that happen in the body. So it's a cueing mechanism. It's like a metronome. Yeah. So we, we need to live in sync with the earth because that's who we are. And when you disconnect, then it's like the astronauts go to space. You have to have all this paraphernalia to try to compensate. And it'll work for a while, but not long. Yeah, so true, <laughs> so true. And I've been studying health and happiness since a few years now, and that's why also this podcast. And one of the things that I've always seen over and over again, no matter what topic we touch, that the more you divorce yourself from nature, the sicker you get, and the more you get connected towards yes. nature, the more healthy you get. And that's yeah. that's just such an important message for all the listeners of this podcast and all the other ones that are gonna come up. They will yeah. always notice whatever we do that will distance us from nature, it's really gonna give us issues in the future. And I notice that myself, if I am a few hours working on a computer, at home. I'm mm -hmm. very sensitive, so I can already start feeling like a little bit of nervousness going in my gut. I already feel a little bit unsteady, that I'm, I'm a little bit restless. And then I, I know, okay, that's now time for me to go back out. I'm going to grab my dog. We're going to go for a walk at the park. And I'm also since now almost five years barefoot, about 99% of the time. Right. And I feel that it's just almost like instantaneous. It's almost like a light switch. You know, When we're out there, we step on the ground and I just feel like, wow, I'm balanced. I just feel balanced and uh, all my energy is coming back again. Yeah. No, it, it's it's true. I, I'm with you. I've been barefoot for 25 <laughs> years, except when I have to go to Rome, you yeah. know, I'll do whatever they were doing for a while. But anyway, um, you know, the, the yogis 5,000 years ago, 10,000 years ago, they talked about K1 and the word earth, chi, yeah. meaning energy. So K1, which is the bottom of the feet, um, and you can find this online anywhere, but the bottom of the feet are the source mm -hmm. for earth energy enters the body yep. and kidney one is what they call it. And then it spreads throughout the meridians and it energizes the body and maintains health. And it's like acupuncture when they do certain things, it's to break those blockages where the energy from the earth travels okay. and so on. So this isn't new. This is old this time. <laughs> but they knew this, you know, five, 10,000 years ago. Yeah the area of Vedic and the, um, the Taoist and all of that. But their mission was to try to live in harmony with nature. And if something is wrong, it's like the cows in the pasture. There's something wrong with the pasture. Yeah. So you got to fix the pasture. In this case, we put shoes on the human being, paved all the streets, and we lost our, our ground yeah. totally. Yeah. And now everybody is suffering. But I'm the same. You know, if I can get out into the woods, get down by the creek, just go anywhere. I, I live in a desert area where there's not a lot of water, but just walking on the sand, every, it doesn't matter where you are. As long as you are touching earth, the earth has this umbrella. 
it's an electrical umbrella. And when you touch it, then your body absorbs it, yeah. uh, both the electrons, which put reduce the inflammation, but it's also this radi uh, resonant energy. A lot of people talk about the Schumann resonance and all of that. It's all connected. It's all, it's no one thing. It's a system of many things that have been here for eons of time. And the first amoeba that ever crawled out of the ocean or wherever, it was grounded. And all life throughout all time was connected to the earth, energized with earth energy that is coming from the sun. We are sunbeams. I mean, we actually literally are. Electrical beings, yeah. Yeah, we are electrical and, and powered by the sun. And that doesn't mean you go stand in the sun. It's just, it's part of your environment. <laughs> I, I know this from growing up on a ranch. Health is the body's most natural state. Yeah. You see it in the rabbits, you see it in the coyote, you see it everywhere in nature, yeah. all of the animals. And the only time there's problems out there is when the humans start contaminating the river or the stream or they do something to disbalance the environment of the animals. But I know that health is the body's most natural state. If you do not have health, then something you're doing is interfering with the immune system's ability to maintain health. For instance, inflammation or pain. You cannot feel pain unless you have inflammation first. So the body catches on fire and it screams out in pain, get me out of here, I'm on fire. <laughs> But that's in kind of an example. And then if you're sick, uh, like the Native Americans that I grew up with, you know, they would bury their children in the earth when they were sick and they would return to normal. I remember one time, it was the strangest thing I ever heard of or ever saw at the time. And I knew nothing about grounding back then even though I spent 30 years in the communications industry grounding. But but I remember one time they had, um, I think it was the Cheyenne, that if you had pneumonia and it was winter, didn't matter, you had to go out and walk and walk and walk and not stop walking wow. until it was gone. Wow. Okay, now what do we do? <laughs> we get in bed and do whatever and whatever and so on. Yeah, when you walk, then you're breathing and you oxygenation of the tissue, the blood is normalized, it's thin and gets in and out of the capillaries and, and it reduces these diseases or disorders. Yeah. But in nature, I try to get this across sometime when I'm talking to younger people, especially, you know, I tell them you have minimum 7,500 grandmothers. The greatest grandmother of all, maybe 10,000. <laughs> and all the genetics through all of life came through. Nature got us here. There's something in our body that's a million times smarter than any person on the planet. And all the computers in the planet, all of this stuff, is nothing more trying to mimic the brain. All of these things, all technology comes from within us. This knowledge that we manifest in machinery and communication and electrical, it's already in us. It's who we are and what got us here. And now our smart brains are trying to figure all of that out, how it works, and then re-manifest and recreate it, <laughs> which is that necessary? Some of it is, I'm sure. I, I, I know. But we, we have to realize where this knowledge comes from, where life comes from. I don't have the answers on any of this. The older I get, the less I know. <laughs> But the more I know that we're all connected and we all have this synergy, life is trying to move forward. Each generation is different than the last generation, but yet we're all connected. We're still one. I am no different than my grandmother was, however many <laughs> hundreds of thousands of years ago. I am the same person. Uh, I've been refined and, and whatever. But the main thing is that nature in us yeah that protects us, that builds against environmental challenges and whatever. And there's a war going on in the body at all times. That's why you have an immune system that keeps you alive. It's your immune system is forever on guard, protecting you and protecting cells and, and all of that. That's why inflammation is so disastrous because it compromises the immune system. Because the immune system only knows to do one thing, put out the fire and return the body to normal. I have seen you know, arthritic fingers on crippled old men just eventually over a few years just straighten out. They start to gain their movement back. I've seen cartilage come back. I've seen all these things. And everybody said back then, no, it's not possible, you know, 25 years ago. And like autism, they didn't know what causes autism. Autism is an inflammation-related health disorder. Go to the universities, Google, you know, doesn't say what caused the inflammation, but it is an autoimmune disorder.
I could go on and on and on about all of that. But the main thing is what I'm really trying to say is health is free. Yeah. Health is your most natural state. All you have to do is remove the things from your life or your environment that are interfering with the immune system's ability to maintain health. Now, if you're sleeping on a foam bed and had carpets on the floor and you don't ever go outdoors, then your body is slowly being incinerated. I mean, it's on fire. It's disintegrating. Uh, where if you go out and walk a certain amount every day, barefoot, and get enough sunshine, get your vitamin D back, uh, get your lungs working. You don't have to go lift weights and <laughs> go crazy. You look at the animals. Look at what they do. They run around. They do things, uh, but they're not on treadmills. <laughs> Uh, just moderation. Everything in, with health is moderation. It's not just grounding alone. Grounding just puts the fire out, stabilizes the immune system. But you still have to eat proper food. I mean, you have to eat real food. You have to drink clean water. You have to get sunlight. You have to do these simple things. But they're there for you to do. You don't have to work at any of it. And try not to get deceived by all those marketing campaigns and the, what comes out in the TV saying, oh, you, to be healthy, you need to get this product, you need to get that product. At the end of the day, it's just people trying to make more profits with selling their products and not yeah. really on, on yeah. taking the priority of focusing on the health of the person. Yeah. yeah, I think if you go back in history, a lot of people lived to be in their 80s and 90s. and It was fairly common. But then the average age of life expectancy was like in the 40s. But that was because of famine, disease, and war. But you remove you know, the war and all that kind of stuff. Then all of a sudden, life expectancy goes way up. Now, the advent of antibiotics and things like that, that doubled the population of the planet. Um, you know, I, I don't have the answers. I just know from observations. <laughs> uh, 79 years of observations. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen a lot of reports where they are proud to say how our generation is getting older. But the thing is, you don't want to get older if you're going to be sick since 20 years already in your life. Yeah, You want to be healthy yeah. when you're going to get old. Because otherwise, you're constantly going to be going to doctors, getting yeah. operated and being in hospitals and taking all your medication of a pill box of 20 little pills. That's not life anymore. You know, there's a balance in all of that. It all starts with, first of all, everybody's suffering from inflammation. Everybody you know, I don't care who they are, everybody you know <laughs> is suffering from inflammation. And, and some of them are it's really disastrous. That's because of shoes. And then our poor diets, because people don't grow food anymore and do what they used to do. When I was a kid, everything came out of the garden. <laughs> so it had no barcode on it? No. The only thing we ever bought, we have a bag of flour and a little bit of sugar and you know, things like that, but we never bought in the early days anyway. Now everything's a can. And I remember in this Swanson TV, TV came along and then they built a tray so you could sit in front of the TV and eat microwave food. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it is what it is. Uh, we've gone too far one way. Now it's time to bring it back. I think that your generation and that's the change is happening one person at a time, one family at a time. The green movement, the whole food type movement, the natural food, all of these things, even though a lot of that's pretty crazy the way they present it, but the concept is valid. Yeah. Uh, eat food as close to live as possible and th because you're eating nutrition, you're eating electrons. If you cook it and <laughs> kill it and cook it, yeah. uh, it's okay to a degree, but the preserved foods and you know all the preservatives it's too hard on your body too hard on your immune system you need to probably eat 50 percent less yeah. but eat nutrition instead of you know quantity of food exactly so it's more the nutrient dense yeah and not yeah. just to think about eating all those empty calories if you go to yeah. some burger place you have a big burger but in the end of the day you had a lot yeah. of calories but yeah. l very little nutrients so your body is saying hey i still need more because i don't feel that i'm getting fulfilled with all the nutrients so give me more right. of whatever's out there <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of interesting. I remember like when I grew up on wilderness, I think I thought it was the wilderness because all my <laughs> friends lived in town. But, but I remember we ate in season. Mm -hmm. Hickory nuts were in season. We gathered hickory nuts and we saved them, <laughs> stored them up, cooked them. Then we'd eat them through the winter. Yeah, the same with the walnuts and whatever kind of nuts and stuff we had. Uh, we had some meat. It was kind of rough for sometimes because we didn't get big freezers until about 1950 or so. And before then, you know, you had chickens on Sunday. You went out in the morning and picked a chicken or two, and that was your Sunday meal. 
but we lived in harmony with the environment. There's other things that are involved there. Berries, when the cherries were in season, mm. we would go sit in the cherry tree and eat them as fast as we could before the birds got to them. <laughs> <laughs> but there's something about eating foods in season, very yeah. cleansing and very energetic. Yeah, that's so true. And that's we are doing that today as well at home. We are oh, only buying the fruits, what are in season and what are here regional. So we're not having yep. them transported across the world because yep. you already know not only that it's not good for the environment, but it's also not good for you because at the end yep. you are eating fruits that are only maybe half half of the nutrients because they were taken out of the ground before they could even ripe fully right. and mm -hmm. get all the fully yep. nutrients and all the vitamins. So you're eating something that only has 50% of the nutrients and you're getting the world on top of that more uh, under stress through all the transportation. Yep. Yeah. It's all about nature. Get back to nature. Yeah, so true. I've seen some studies about children who grow up in a very sterile environment where, for example, they are getting their hands washed regularly with the alcohol spray and, and the kitchen counters are always yeah. uh, cleaned with alcohol. So they actually started analyzing what's the difference between families who are ultra clean about their environment and those and families who allow their kids to jump in mud and get uh, right. rolling around the fields. And they actually noticed that the kids who are in a very sterile environment, they have more issues with allergies and those yeah. kids who are rolling around the mud their immune system is just adapting to the environment it's constantly getting stronger and adapting and, and they do not have such ailments as the other kids had right i mean your body knows it all it knows how to build and protect and whatever you know toxins and poisons are a challenge because they don't normally exist in nature i mean they they do but not concentration amounts where you're going to be ingesting them and so on But yeah, the body, the immune system knows all. Yeah. I mean, you expose it to a pathogen and then it's going to adapt to it. And then forever you are protected. You're protected from tens of thousands of viruses you don't even know about. Mm -hmm. But this happened over millions of, you know, however, how much time <laughs> that we've been here. We don't trust nature. We are not smart <laughs> enough <laughs> to trust nature. But yet you look at nature. I mean, uh, it's obvious. Yeah. yeah. And I think nowadays there's even the so-called forest bathing, yeah, that I think it came from Japan. Yes. And the government of Japan uh -huh. was noticing that their employees and their people were getting sick and they were not often enough in nature. So they came up with the initiative to create yep. that uh -huh. forest bathing technique so that people can actually go out there and start feeling better. And they saw such an increase in health from the yep. people who are doing that, that they're actually now promoting that in other countries as well. Yes, I promote it myself. It's absolutely essential. If you can't do anything else, <laughs> just go down, get out in the woods somewhere, yeah. find a rock, sit down. If it's next to a stream, take your shoes off, put your feet in the water, and, and get well, and, you know, get healthy. Yeah. I mean, breathe the air and just resonate with that energy. Yeah. The trees are putting out energy. They're all connected. The animals, you know, it's like when you touch the earth. In the early days, we used to send Western Union and telegraph through the earth because the earth has an electrical charge you know it's like when the sun went down it would quit working because it was the energy of the sun that was causing create exciting the electrons which created the movement in order to send a message but anyhow so when you're connected to the earth the earth is a huge communications device so when you put your bare feet on the earth you are electrically connected with every other living thing on the planet amazing and there's a resonant frequency there that You feel it. You know that you're a part of something much bigger than you ever thought of, yeah. about. And, and it's tuning into it and going with it, going with life and going with nature. That's a challenge today because of we're so inundated in these cities. And, yeah. But you owe it to yourself to go for the picnic, do whatever you have to do to get outdoors. You need the fresh air to clean up your lungs, to oxygenate the tissue, to normalize your blood viscosity, to... Restore the immune system, restore the endocrine system, all of these things, and um, let the body return to health. Yeah. So I have a question that comes from a lot of uh, my listeners as well as the people around okay. us because well, my wife and I, we have been in this barefoot journey since now almost five years, being either in the city or being in the parks or being in nature. So we just go wherever we go and we don't have our shoes with us. And uh, people are asking us, can you actually still get grounded if you are having a stroll in the city and if you are uh, doing all your daily errands? So that's my question to you. Is the type of ground that you're stepping on, if it's, um, let's say, concrete or if it's a uh, 
cement or if it's stone, what is conductive? What types of grounds will not allow you the grounding effect or the earthing? And what grounds do allow you to have that grounding and earthing effect through the conduction? Well, first of all, we're not trying to light light bulbs. You know, a lot of guys learn about this grounding and they're thinking 110 or 220 volts and this and that and whatever and running motors and generators and all that. We're talking about stabilizing the immune system of a human body. It does not take a lot of energy, but it does take a significant amount. Uh, significant, but not in the terms of electrical events. Like static electricity is, you know, you pick your foot up off the floor on a carpet with a rubber shoe on and then you go touch a doorknob if you can see a spark that's probably 5,000 volts of charge oh. that's not what runs the body <laughs> the body operates on you know millivolts and just microvolts mm -hmm. and it isn't electricity that flows like through a light bulb it's more about metabolic processes you ingest food a lot of people think well i do this and i do that and whatever and it comes through and does this in my body well the first thing that happens to food in your body <laughs> the acid pretty much do their thing and that's a whole process but anyhow the idea is to end up increasing atp which is taking a proton and an electron and putting power putting them back together which creates energy one way or another so I, I live in the desert. I go walk in the desert. I walk in the sand. Okay, everybody says, oh my God, that's a waste of time. You're walking on sand. Well, sand is made of earth. It's material. It's rock, mineral. And all rock and mineral hold moisture. Some of them hold more than others, but they're all semiconductive. And it's like sand. If you're walking in sand, you know, just as you walk, it sinks just maybe even a quarter inch. Well, you're pressing down on wet sand, and so you're grounded. Those rocks are grounded. They conduct electricity. Not They're not going to light a light bulb. They will dissipate static charge on your body, static electricity, which five, they can get rid of 5,000 volts just like that. Dissipate it. Just, you know, discharge it. So if you're walking on a sidewalk, if it's noonday, you have to be careful about heat. But if you'll notice that wherever you walk, you leave a footprint. <laughs> but anyhow, basically, anything that is made of earthen materials, uh, like concrete, uh, brick, and natural stone, of course, sand, soil, dirt, and then anything that is live vegetation that comes out of the earth, it's all part of the earth, it's all energetically connected, like grass is conductive. So any of those natural things, and anything that's primarily natural stone, it's going to dissipate the charge in your body and it's going to equalize your body with the earth. It's like an electrician will not go stand on concrete in a leather shoe <laughs> and handle live power <laughs> because he'll get electrocuted. Yeah. Wood will even conduct after a rainstorm oh, wow. until it dries out. <laughs> <laughs> but generally speaking, wood is not a conductor. Glass, glazed tile glass tile okay. you know saltile tile is rather conductive as long as you don't put too much sealer on it when you lay this tile down you don't put a plastic grout between the concrete and the saltile tile and then if you use saltile then put a water-based sealer on it and it'll still be conductive unless it's stone tile uh, marble those kind of things and they're all ground and again it just depends on what type of um, adhesive you use to bond it to the concrete. If you use grout, regular concrete grout, it's all conductive. But linoleum, carpets, glazed tile, they are not conductive. They are like glass. They are an insulator. Foam, rubber, bedding, you know, all of these things. You sit on the couch, you're not grounded. You're sitting there cooking. <laughs> <laughs> so did I cover them all? I think so. Yep. But it doesn't take a lot. Yep. Because, like I said, you're not trying to flip a switch and a light bulb comes on, although electricity is the speed of light. But what we're doing is called dissipative electrical. I mean, you're dissipating charge. So you're feeding electrons into something to the point that it's absorbing and reducing the radicals in the body. Yeah. So there's no flow of electrons. There's no flow. This is just a migration of charge from the earth into the body that reduces these radicals and prevents oxidative stress, inflammation. Wow, that's amazing. And the way how you explained it really makes much, much more sense, especially if someone listening yeah. to this for the first time. 
And I would like to also share with you some experiences that we've had from people near us also, because for my wife and for myself, we have seen magnificent benefits. And as we have crossed uh, Spain barefoot and we are actually writing a book about our experience and awesome. what has changed in our health since we did that mm -hmm. from spiritual health, physical health, mental health, everything had a, a change yes. through that simple practice of just losing those shoes <laughs> and not being disconnected. And we have then also, I would say, motivated, we have influenced other family members around us to try to do the same. And just one example, there's one lady who we know from my wife, she's from Poland. And this lady, she is today 78 years old. And when she was younger, she had a child who was handicapped. So since the child was born, she was not able to sleep well since almost 53 years. She was right. not able to sleep the mm -hmm. full night through. So she was seeing what we were doing and she heard about us uh, doing our tour. So she's like, well, do you think this could help me as well? And we're like, yeah, sure. You should definitely try it out. So with 78 years, she started going around her neighborhood uh, barefoot. And then she came home and she felt OK. Yeah, she said people looked at me a little bit awkward, but uh, I don't care. So. So later she said it was the first time in her life that she was able to sleep the night through. And yeah. well, she thought that must have been a coincidence. So she tried it again. It worked again. So she's today over half a year now practicing this every single day. And she's still writing to us, I think once a week, thanking us that she can sleep again. She can get back her health by just being able to sleep every night. Mm -hmm. That was so amazing for us to hear. And uh, the other thing that we have observed, for example, when my mother-in-law came to Spain to visit us, she had a fall, so she hurt her knee and she was not able to bend her knee the next day because it was inflamed and it was very painful and she was limping. So my wife, after a couple of days when she was walking with us in the park, she said, well, take off your shoes and it's maybe going to help you recuperate from your inflammation that you have <laughs> in your knee much quicker. Yeah. So she's like giving all kinds of excuses why not to do it. But at the end of the day, she tried it out. And after about five minutes walking on the grass, yep. she told us, hey, kids, my pain is gone. I can bend my leg a bit more now. Look at this. And we're like, wow. Yeah, so it's just the power of grounding. And, and since then, she was every day doing her grounding with us at the park. And she said it's always around about five minutes time. And then her pain disappeared. And she yep. recuperated much, much quicker from her inflammation that she had in her knee. And she was able to travel back to Poland and be fine again. Yep. I hear that. That's common. It only takes five to 10 minutes. You know, what happens, let me explain what happened to her. You know, she puts her bare feet on the earth. And so instantly, a speed of light, she is grounded. The blood is circulating, you know, once a minute in the body. And as the blood goes through the feet, the blood is circulating and it's picking up electrons and it's circulating throughout the body. And within a few minutes, you increase the amount of negative electrons on the surface of red blood cells. Red blood cells are electrical. And so you increase the negative charge on those blood cells. And when you do, then the blood cells, because they're more negative, they push each other apart. And now the blood thins and normalizes like in nature. And then it goes in and out of the capillaries, oxygenates the tissue, reduces the inflammation. So about five, 10 minutes, you know, the blood goes through the body five, 10 times. And so that's enough to really reduce most of the inflammatory response. I have to tell it in a story. One of the groups that I've probably grounded more than anyone else is ladies with MS. And I'm not a doc and I don't treat them that way. We just do the research and stuff. But anyhow, they come in, their their arms or they don't have control of them and they're in a lot of pain and a lot of distress, especially if they have a children. And in all too many cases, the husbands have gone. So here's this woman that is just traumatized with this disorder. And one time back in around 2000, a lady that I was grounding, I asked her, just incidentally, I said, you know, what caused this to manifest in your life? What happened in your life prior to you developing MS? And she said she didn't know. And then after I grounded her bed and got her all organized for the study and everything, then she said, oh my God, she said, you know, five years ago, I this happened. I lost someone dear and uh, I lost my house in the 208 in the financial crisis and, and it went on and on. So she went into a sympathetic state, a lot of grief and a lot of loss uh, in the sympathetic state. Then her body was chronically flooded with cortisol. And then that cortisol was being fed by the mind. And then the parasympathetic, which normally reduces 
uh, or dampens the response of the sympathetic, it becomes exhausted. That's called exhausted adrenals, tired, fatigue, all that kind of stuff. So anyhow, long story short, I would always have them sit down and I would take and put an electrode patch right in the center of their hand, EKG patch. And then I would connect it to a ground cord and walk over and connect it to the electrical ground. And I would just have them sit there. And it got to the point, I had ground enough for these women, I could honestly say, you know, in about five, 10 minutes, I could honestly look them in the eye and say, you no longer have MS. You know, we have flooded your body with free electrons. Your immune system is no longer oxidizing or neutrophils are no longer oxidizing the cells in the myelin sheath, so that that has stopped. The immune response that's causing this problem stopped. So now the immune system returns to normal, and it goes back to cleaning up the damage, which could take, in some of those cases, one year, five years, depending on how much damage and so on. But it'll clean it up and arrest it, and the pain stops. Their color comes up. They look, on the average, 10 years younger. They can go into the bathroom after they've been grounded 30 minutes, and they go in there and they say, oh, my God, look at me. I look like myself. I look like my old self. (laughs) That's because their color came back. The pain stopped, and their demeanor changed, and they felt hope, I guess, is what it probably is. So I said, as long as you stay grounded, you will never have MS again in your life because your immune system is now stabilized. Now, when you get in your car and go home, you're not going to be grounded, so your pain may come back up. But as soon as you get home, start grounding yourself and stay grounded in some fashion or form as much as you can so that you're grounded more than you're not, so you give your immune system a chance to clean this up and prevent this from continuing. And it's the same with every other health disorder, but it only takes five, 10 minutes and you stop that immune response, I mean, the oxidation. It's like you can have somebody that's an acute injury, uh, dental work, whatever, put a patch on the side of their face, and they won't experience what I call the Vicodin pain. That does not happen because the body is flooded with free electrons, and it automatically reduces any radicals that are oxidizing tissue in the area of the damage. As soon as you take that away, then the oxidation starts to build, and then the pain starts to come up. But this is nature. Nature gave that to us. We had that all along, throughout all yeah. life. You know. But that's what your mother-in-law yeah. experienced. That is so fantastic. Mm-hmm. Thanks for that explanation. And yeah. we will definitely promote that further to everyone else, especially those who are listening to this podcast, that they can also hopefully forward that to their relatives as well so that they can share this health with everybody, that everybody yeah. has a solution and they don't need to have a lot of money in their bank account to start getting healthy again yeah. or a health insurance to get healthy. You can do it by doing simple and very cheap type of solutions like we have spoken about today. Yeah. Health is your birthright. It's, it's yeah. free. It's free. <laughs> exactly. You know, it, you just have That's to pay attention to your nervous system. If something isn't right, then yeah. stop. That's right. Get back That's in right. nature. And that's where I've noticed once I've been more towards nature, my intuition is telling me, do that again. I need that. I need to be more in contact with nature. And that's where I feel I'm I'm getting drawn to it. And now I cannot pass a day without being at least one or two hours in nature because otherwise I can feel it. I can feel it. I'm just, I'm not going to be able to function anymore. Right. I know exactly what you're talking about. I'm I'm grounded as we sit here. I I don't do anything ungrounded. <laughs> me too. I also have my grounding mat below me. <laughs> yeah, but I'm 79 years old. I can still walk five miles as long as I go barefoot. If I yeah. put those shoes yeah. on for you know trail or whatever hour, I'm done. Can't go any further. Yeah. <laughs> um, but as long as I'm barefoot, connected to the earth, and I've got some sunlight around me, shaded, you know, not direct sunlight, yeah. but just nice energy and fresh air. Man, I can walk forever. You know, I'll be 80 next year. <laughs> Most people my age can't even get out of a chair. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Who can say that nowadays when they're 80 and can really do all these things and, and walk so many miles? It's just amazing. And that's why when I think about looking at the statistics in Europe to see which is the population that live very long and also healthier. And actually, Spain, they're not so far away from being pretty high on the list. Yep. They're not yet the blue zone, but they're still pretty high. I noticed that when I came here because I said, wow, the people are actually living more outside when they meet with their family 
family. They're sitting at the park. They yes. bring a table outside. They're sitting out there. They're looking at the, at the people walk by. They're greeting people. They're communicating. They're being friendly. And then when I asked them when I first came here, when I came from Germany, and in Germany, a lot of people joined the gym. So I asked them, so where do you guys go to the gym here? And they look at me like weird, like who goes to the gym? Yes, we exactly. do have gyms, but we are actually doing all of our sports and exercises out here in nature because you don't need to walk in a treadmill for one hour if you can have this beautiful park here and walk in nature. <laughs> you know, exactly. Yeah, you're dead on. I heard somebody talk the other day about the blue zones. And I remember they're talking about Okinawa. Uh, I believe it's Okinawa, where they go out and the older people, they live to be maybe 100 years or more. And so what do they do daily? And they have these paths with these boulders, you know, rounded rocks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they're grounded in the ends of the earth. So anyhow, they walk on these paths, and they're ancient, and they go, you know, go yeah. back forever. And <laughs> these people live longer and are healthier than their counterparts. Okay, so what are they doing? They're grounded, and they're outdoors <laughs> in the sunlight. You know, what else do you need? And they eat a lot of fresh vegetables. So it isn't a blue zone. Isn't necessarily the actual location of where it is. It's what the people are doing there. It has to do with the amount of time they spend outdoors, in sunlight, in contact with the earth, and the type of natural food they're eating from their local environment. And the rest of the blue zone is all craziness to me. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Our time today in our conversation, it went so fast. It felt like we were speaking for 15 minutes and we're already an hour in. And that thank you so much for your investment in, in giving this message out there. I have one final question for you today. Clint. Sure. And the book has come out a couple of years ago. Then also documentary came out a couple of years ago. How is the trend that you have seen since the book has been out, since the documentary has been out? And what do you think the future looks like? Do you think it's going the right direction? Well, yeah, the book uh, is well over a million copies in print, and it's now published in 23 different languages, I think, and I'm not sure what the sales are in those other countries and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, the short to the Earthing movie, the 15-minute one, that one went over 100 million views in just a few months after it was released. And then the Earthing movie, I think it's on several different platforms. But on YouTube alone, it's probably five, six million. On Gaia, it's probably five, six million. Then it's on Amazon and other platforms. YouTube, we offer free, no commercials, no interruption, anything. But anyhow, what we found is, you know, the earthing message. It's really about a woman from the ages of maybe 35 to 55. Uh, the older, they have more disposable income. Our average customer is probably in the, you know, around 50. And she's taking care of her mom, who got health issues and so on. And she's trying to help her daughter, who is taking care of you know, all too often somebody on the spectrum today and other issues. And so it's just a challenge. But these women are the majority of people who get involved with grounding are that age group. And they share it back and forth with each other. And like the mats and things like that, we sell millions of those things. And they are primarily purchased by moms. First of all, they buy one, try it, and they get the benefit because some people can't get outdoors or do anything. So then they send that one to their mom because it worked for her. And the mom likes it, and then they she buys another one, gives it to her sister, then buys another one, gives it to whoever. But the average woman will either get everybody taken by the hand and walk them down into the park, <laughs> or if they can't ground them with just a simple mat, ground them to the earth. But the reason these women do that is because they don't need to know the science. It's intuitive. A woman knows if she takes her shoe off and puts her foot on the dirt that she feels better. Men don't know that. <laughs> you know, they want to argue about it and get their feet dirty or whatever. But that's not all men. I'm talking about the U.S. here <laughs> primarily. <laughs> But anyhow, so it's, a, it's a, something that women can share with each other. It's free or it costs very little. And it's totally 100% restorative to health. These mats and stuff, these are not medical devices or anything like that. These are extension cords that connect you to the earth when you're indoors and you can't be outdoors. But without question, you want to be outdoors barefoot on the earth with some sunshine sprinkling through the leaves onto your face yeah. and breathing that clean oxygen and then just letting nature restore your health. Yeah. Yeah. 
I definitely believe that we are going to awaken a lot of yeah. people and that they will be able to go back. And I think some have to term to rewild ourselves again, to be yeah. back in nature again. Yeah. To fully answer your question, uh, the stuff I'm doing more than doubles every year. I wow. mean, it's rapidly expanding exponentially. And it's a consciousness thing. It's just happening. Yeah. It's the hundredth monkey concept. Yeah. It's just spreading and it's going to be everywhere all at once. And I remember somebody told me one time that said, when people start telling you about grounding, what you need to do and how you need to do it, then you know your job is done. Well, I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> I've done my job. Yeah. I've done my job. 25 years. Yeah, that's true. I got that's a few, a few more that's left. True. But it's time for a younger generation to come along, pick up the baton and go on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think what you mentioned about women, especially for women, as they have had probably the most uncomfortable shoes out there that's yes. being marketed by the shoe company, <laughs> that they are probably the ones who might be saying like, wow, this is mind blowing how it feels just to have my foot flat on the ground and not to have it squished inside of some kind of right. stilettos or something. Probably most men have, I would say, shoes that are not as bad as the women's shoe, but definitely women's shoes are the ones that bring a lot of physical yes. pains and also the disalignment of the body right. and how it, it's big, big yeah. issue. But thanks, Clint, for your time today. It was amazing. All right. Well, <laughs> I enjoyed it. If you get any questions, you need answers, let me know. Anytime. That's, I love this. Excellent. This is what I do. So I enjoy it. I'm grateful for the opportunity. And we're grateful to have had you here with us. And I will put all of the links to your movies, documentary books and so forth on the show notes. Yeah. Um, is there anywhere else that we can find you or... Yeah, the earthinginstitute.net, yeah. that's where all the research, there's about $20 million worth of research now, Perfect. maybe 30, yeah. 40, 50 uh, peer-reviewed, published papers, all kinds of commentaries, and it's just a body of work, so then no matter who you are, you can understand what we're talking about here. Sometimes these terms are a little <laughs> challenging. <laughs> yeah, excellent. So I will putting the link to that institute as well in case anybody cannot yeah. take notes at this moment. So if they're driving a car mm -hmm. or doing other things, then uh, they can yeah. just click on the link and have access to that. So it was a lovely conversation. And I'm so grateful, Clint, for having you here in the show and sharing this experience oh. with us and also for rediscovering earthing. Yeah, because it was by yeah. coincidence that you came across this again yeah, and it's, yeah, it was intuitive it was a gift yeah. I, I came through me I can't explain it yeah. it's just something that needed to be done I had the yeah. time yeah and so I was lucky enough to get the opportunity fantastic thank you so much and keep up the fantastic work <laughs> all right take care enjoy take care thanks Clint bye bye you bet bye what a lovely eye-opening conversation with Clint I hope this episode has made you curious about the topic earthing and evaluate how much time you spend grounding your body with the superpower of our earth. As we learned today, not being grounded causes inflammation in our body, which is the root cause of many chronic health issues for us humans as well as for our beloved pets. We are all part of nature, and when we disconnect from nature, then it can only raise the risk of having physical, emotional, spiritual and psychological health issues. The first time I watched the Earthing movie, The Remarkable Science of Grounding, I thought to myself, this actually makes sense. This is an excellent documentary which you can watch either on YouTube or in some other video platforms out there. If you are a person who does not believe in it, then I encourage you to experiment. Try it out and see how it resonates with you and listen to your intuition. Start slow, do a couple of minutes of grounding every day for 30 days and ask yourself, did this one month challenge give me more energy? Did it make me feel more alive? What does my body say? Do I resonate with it? Does my body crave for more or not? So if you are looking for ways to challenge yourself and go out of the comfort zone, and test new things that could make you feel happier and healthier, then this is the challenge to take. Please share your experience and tag me on Instagram. My account is called health underscore happiness underscore planet. In the show notes, you will find all the links on where to find Clint's work, his book, and the Earthing Institute, which contains all of the information and studies on this important topic. 
Think about it. Sometimes the best solutions are the easiest ones that come for free. It is crucial for us to be conscious about the things that we can do every day and whether it supports our well-being or not. This podcast was sponsored by Wave Business Excellence Footprint, an online training company that cares about your career development, your personal development, and the well-being of this planet we call home. On the website www.wave-bef.com, you will find courses for managers and for employees who strive to become better every day and will be the leaders of tomorrow. I value your feedback and I would love to hear from you. Please rate, subscribe and share this episode with those whom you think will profit from this information. Your support means the world to me and it motivates me to keep on producing content that adds value to your life. I am looking forward to seeing you in the next episode. Big hugs everyone.